Okay, so this is part two of two. And if you'll recall when I was talking about Rudolf Virchow, he um, disproved abiogenesis, which is spontaneous generation. Classical, known, uh, classical notions of abiogenesis held that complex living organisms are generated by decaying organic substances. This started with Aristotle, and he said that it was a readily observable truth that aphids arise from the dew which falls on plants. Fleas from putrid matter, mice from dirty hay, crocodiles from rotting logs at the bottom of bodies of water, and so forth. Many believed that frogs, for example, were generated from the muddy water that they were found in as well. However, an Italian named Francesco Redi disproved that flies and maggots spontaneously generate from rotting meat by stoppering two other samples with a net and a cork, and that did not allow the flies to gather on the meat, and his control group was the open container. Only the container in which the flies could get access to the meat developed maggots and later flies. So this was the first step in disproving abiogenesis. And finally, Louis Pasteur came in and he used an apparatus he created called the swan-necked flask because of its shape. That shape pre prevented dust and any other airborne particulates from reaching the broth that he had sterilized using heat. Lack of growth was demonstrated by the broth remaining clear. However, when he tipped it or broke off the neck of the flask so that the broth could interact with the airborne particles, then bacteria grew and multiplied in the broth, making it cloudy. So he definitely proved that abiogenesis did not exist. Okay, so we're going to put the stopper in the lid of cell theory and we're going to talk about cells themselves. Some of the terms that you need to know are unicellular, multicellular, extracellular, intracellular, and intercellular. A lot of these are very similar, so you need to make sure that you keep them straight. I will define them for you throughout the lecture. All cells contain three components. They have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and DNA containing chromosomes of some sort. If they are, they are classified, first of all, by the presence or absence of a nucleus. If they have a nucleus present, they are called eukaryotic cells. Eu means true, karyon means kernel, but it's referring to the nucleus. Prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus, and so bacteria would be considered prokaryotic cells. Cells can be classified by their, plant, uh, their cell coverings as well. For example, plant cells have a cell wall and a cell membrane. Animal cells only have a cell membrane, with the exception of one animal on the planet. Um, and bacterial cells have a cell membrane and a capsule, sometimes referred to mistakenly as a cell wall. So let's take a look at prokaryotic cells. All prokaryotic cells lack a nucleus. They have a DNA region called the nucleoid, and you can see that here on this uh, diagram but they have fairly simple contents. There's no membrane-bound organelles. The DNA is not separated from the machinery of the cell, and so that can make it um, slower to respond. Make sure that you know a diagram of a prokaryotic cell in general. You can use your book to, to write it down, or you can pause the lecture and do this one. There are two kingdoms that are prokaryotic, archaebacteria and eubacteria, and more on those in second semester. Eukaryotic cells contain complex membrane-bound organelles. I want you to notice, though, that the prokaryotic cells have ribosomes, and so do eukaryotic cells, and that's because ribosomes, which make proteins, um, do not have a membrane surrounding them. So eukaryotic cells contain a complex membrane-bound organelles, and they have a nucleus that's enclosed in a membrane. The kingdoms Protista, Fungi, Plants, and Animalia are all eukaryotic. Remember I said that cells can be classified by their cell coverings. Well, let's take a look at bacterial cell coverings. Each prokaryotic cell has a cell wall, a cell membrane, um, and a capsule. Archaebacteria and eubacteria are separated by one molecule that is contained in their capsule. Archaebacteria lack a protein carbohydrate complex called peptidoglycan, and eubacteria have it. 
Plant cell coverings have a cell membrane and a cell wall. The cell wall is made of a polysaccharide called cellulose, or referred to in dietary terms as dietary fiber. That cell wall provides the structure and rigidity to help plant cells maintain their shape under variable pressures created by fluctuating water content. The animal cells only have a cell or plasma membrane. Um, again, I said with the exception of one animal, you don't need to know it. This allows the animal cells to have a flexible shape in order to better perform various functions. So you do need to know the differences between them. Now, the next time we cover this, we're going to be talking about cell organelles, functions, structures, and their locations. So that's something that you're definitely going to need to know the differences between all of the different kinds of cells. So um, make sure that you put your jetpacks on because we're going to be ready to rock it out. All right, have a good day. Thanks a lot.